Last night, my bike got stolen. Not by this guy who unsuccessfully used a crowbar to try and pry through the lock. And also not by this guy who used a hammer and a blowtorch to try and attack the top tube before also unsuccessfully trying to pry up the lock. And definitely not by this idiot who didn't attempt to steal the bike, but instead kept wrapping it in duct tape. Instead, it was these two. One guy used an angle grinder on the lock before letting his friend or maybe coworker ride off with the bike. This video chronicles my attempt at trying to recover a stolen bike in San Francisco. Now, the main reason that I'm making this video is because I hate bike theft. I've been testing GPS trackers and telling any bicyclist that'll listen that they should probably get one. But I think a lot of people are reluctant to use GPS trackers or air tags because of their many imperfections. The top of which is the ability for thieves to find and destroy or disable them before you're actually able to get your bike back. So rather than running around San Francisco with Gordon, like in previous tests, we left my cheapest electric bike outside of his apartment, then pointed a camcorder at the bike to record any theft. To prepare the bike, I installed the same tracking I have on my mini cargo bike, an Inboxia GPS tracker and two Apple AirTags. Bike recovered or not, I'll be doing a giveaway for four AirTags or a new GPS at the end of the video. For many reasons, I think we need to be a little bit clever and place our trackers in different places, but if you really wanna know where I put mine, I'll include links below. To ensure amateurs didn't take the bike, we left the flimsy cable lock at home and used a pretty decent U-lock. In addition to the lock and trackers, I also ensured that my bike was registered on Bike Index and then also added the checkerboard tape as just an easy way to identify that the bike was mine. When the thieves showed up with an angle grinder and blowtorch, the bike had been outside for just over 24 hours. The entire theft, however, took less than three minutes and started at 8.23 p.m. Once the thief rode up with the bike, we opened up the Inboxia GPS and Apple Find My Apps to check on the bike's location. Okay, so first I'll start with this. The GPS tracker showed the bike's location as a couple blocks away, but the AirTag hadn't updated yet and still showed the bike is outside. So there's no iPhones wherever it's at. So either the thief doesn't have an iPhone or there's no iPhones next to him. The last update was eight minutes ago, which is probably right when it got stolen. We grabbed jackets, a voice recorder, and these cheap $30 spy pen cameras and headed out. So the bike location has already changed. Um, it started out right here where we are, then it went along here, stopped here for a long time, and now they're closer to market. We left to follow the bike with hopes that it would stay put for a while. If we could at least get within eye shot of the bike, we could offer the thief cash or get police involved. I just got another notification. We're gonna see where it went. Now it's zigging back over this way. They're heading towards Civic Center. Yeah. What chance do you think we'll actually recover it tonight? I think we're at, um, I don't know, 55%, 55% maybe? About 30 minutes after the theft, we got our first AirTag update. Until this point, the AirTag said the bike hadn't moved. All right, just, just a quick pause cool. so I can, my heart can settle down. But how are the uh, things comparing? The AirTags, um, the, their last update was six minutes ago at 844. I think we've got Hyde and Turk and Hyde and Turk. They got them showing up in the same places, updated both about five minutes ago. One thing that's really important to understand about all of these small trackers is that they don't give like real time second by second GPS updates. Our GPS tracker was set to provide updates at its highest frequency every five to seven minutes, but that frequency should double to every two or three minutes after we toggled the tracker into lost mode. The AirTags can't have their tracking frequency changed, but I know from sort of previous tests with it that it can update as often as every two to three minutes, as long as it's like detecting movement and there's an iPhone nearby to relay the location. So right now we should be super close to the bike, like within maybe a block and a half of it. Um, we're just gonna kind of like look around and see if we can find it. We are in the absolute like scariest part of the city. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can at least like Bluetooth connect to the AirTag and then also check for a GPS update and kind of go from there. Across the street, there were numerous bikes in pieces. So we worried we were in a race to find the bike before the thief could find the trackers. 
Even though thieves can probably make more money selling a complete bike, selling parts is less trackable and probably less risky. Man, we're so close to it, we should almost be able to touch it. Cool, so I guess we'll just turn left and see what we see. We walked toward the bike's GPS location and saw a cargo van that was suspiciously close to where the bike should be. But just as we started looking into the van, the thief rolled right past us. That was it. I'm just gonna follow him. So at this point we had the thief with my bike and he seemed to be just kind of like circling around the same few blocks. Now I did have cash on me, but I only had about 35 bucks. This is more than 10% of what the bike cost, which I think is a pretty good deal for a stolen bike, but I wasn't sure if the bike thief was gonna think that it was worth more. If he did haggle with us and ask for more, were we gonna like walk with him to the ATM and we're having small talk? I don't know. It just seemed like a little bit messy and it seemed like a lot of things could go wrong. So. We chickened out and called the police. We called the San Francisco non-emergency line that they ask you to use for bike theft. Your town may have something similar. Yeah, it's a pedal bike. It's like a, like a little e-bike, um, but it's got GPS on it. Now, I was a little bit reluctant to make this phone call. First of which, I think we felt like a little bit of success tracking the bike down to this like few block area. But then it also felt like if we handed this over to the police, it sort of like took the actual recovery out of our hands. Second, I just wasn't sure if the police were gonna be much help. San Francisco at least seems like it's having a lot of like unsolved property theft right now. And I just wasn't sure if a $300 bike would be important enough for the cops to do the legwork to actually recover it. Especially when the thief seemed to keep moving around. While we waited for the police, the neighborhood got a little bit more scary. An ambulance arrived to help someone who we heard was having a drug overdose, and then a fight broke out that ended in someone pulling out a gun. Seeing the gun was enough to push us a block further away, which made us miss when the police arrived, which then led them to calling us back, which then resulted in us hurrying back to try and find them before they left. Finally though, we found them. I was up at his apartment on Taylor, I had my bike outside. Uh -huh. Somebody cut through it on an angle grinder. Uh, last we checked, they were just a couple blocks over. We, we walked past them. Okay. Um, Where's the oh, bike now? I showed the cops a photo of the bike and showed its latest GPS location. Also, we agreed that I wouldn't press charges and just wanted the bike back. They agreed to go look for it and then we waited a couple blocks away. The only issue with this was that though the thief seemed to be staying in the neighborhood, he always kept moving. Cool. So we just... After a while, the police called yeah, us back. The they couldn't find the bike. From the initial call to the police to the cops leaving for the night, we ended up making six phone calls. I think three to four of those were the police just trying to get an updated location for the bike because they couldn't find it. I think we may have been more successful at this point if we would have been able to share the tracker locations with the police, but as far as I know, there's no way to do that. The GPS tracker went idle for a while before we finally got a promising movement notification. Um, I mean, it's, it's showing it's like moving around there, so I think that's a great sign that it's still there. What's that, is that Golden Gate? Yes. Oh, there's the bike, he's on it. Oh. There you go, guys. Gosh, thank you so much, man. I appreciate happen. that. Um, does this happen often? Can I record this? It, I mean, it was right where you were tracking. Yeah. I'm like, it's gone in the hotel. And then I went up there and talked to people. And then... cool, All right, man. fellas. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Sorry I really that appreciate happened, it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, appreciate yeah, it. Too. We definitely got lucky, but we got the bike back. And now the question that I'm wondering is why doesn't every e-bike come with a cheap GPS tracker already installed on it? I wanna say a huge thank you to the SFPD and the two police that came out that ended up going super above and beyond to recover the bike. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next year.